there was a couple of convicts and they heard from another convict that a particular farmer had a safe with all kinds of money. So they decided that they were going to rob him and they didn't think it through because, you know, when you rob somebody, they see who you are and now you have witnesses who can testify against you in a court and put you back in prison. And there's only one thing to do. You've got to murder those people to silence their ability to witness against you. And once you commit murder, then you get all kinds of attention and law officers are looking for you day and night. They, they didn't really think through all of that. And as a result, uh, like most crimes, a certain reversal took place. It didn't work out the way they thought it would. And this is like the story of Agog, because the Amalekites are referred to in 1 Samuel 15. And Saul won his battle, but he didn't obey God because God told him not to spare Agog, the king of the, the Amalekites. And also he was to treat as harem everything. But what did he do? Instead of utterly destroying everything like the Lord told him, God had to raise up Samuel and go and give a message, a fearful message to King Saul that God had rejected him, that he was no longer king in God's mind. <clears throat> now, when God rejects you, it's bad because who can bail you out? The Amalekites, some of them escaped Saul's army. And we know that there was a famous descendant of these people named Haman, who had the same enmity against the people of Israel. And today there are anti-Semites. They push Jewish people down in Brooklyn. They do all kinds of graffiti on synagogues. They express their hatred <clears throat> of the Jewish people in all kinds of ways. But Salvation is of the Jews. And I will bless those who bless the Jewish people. And the word of God was given to the Jewish people. And it was their scribes that recorded it and preserved it over the years. And so it says in 1 Samuel 15, You have rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee. And uh, we know that uh, just like those two convicts that I alluded to, who thought they had gotten away with murder, but they were later arrested. They confessed what they did. A novel was written about it. A, a movie was made about it. The person that played one of them also got in trouble with the law. Anyway, at the end of the movie, these two guys are shown to be very, very afraid as they are hanged 
by the neck until dead in the Kansas penitentiary. And it says, when Samuel showed up, Shmuel, he said, bring hither to me uh, Gog, the king of the, Am uh, the Amalekites. And Agog came unto him, uh, the Bible says, cautiously. And Agog said, surely the bitterness of death is past. And he had a bright hope that he would not have to answer for his crimes. But Samuel said, as thy sword hath made women childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel cut a gog in pieces before the Lord in Gilgal. This is a very frightening thing because this man had rejected the word of God and the Lord rejected him. The king that was supposed to execute him also rejected the word of God and the Lord rejected him. And this wicked king killed many children. And America has rejected the word of God, at least many Americans have. And America has killed many children. And this scripture is very, very scary. First Samuel 15, verse 26. Thou hast rejected the word of God and the Lord hath rejected thee. Now, right now, I'm translating the word of God. And we're going to put this Yiddish Brit Hadashah, God willing, all over Borough Park. And there will be many people who, unfortunately, God forbid, will reject it. And someday we will have to answer for that. And I have to watch my own life carefully because the way I live cannot be a rejection of the word of God. I must live according to the Lord's will expressed in his word. And I should realize that just as Agog walked cautiously when he was called, hoping against hope that he would be spared, there are many people who go to their deathbeds and they hope against hope that somehow their good deeds will help them, their righteousness, the, fa the fact that they come from righteous, pious, Jewish stock, or religious people in their family, or some things they've done, some contributions they've made. Maybe they were rich and they got part of a hospital named after them, got their picture put in the lobby of the hospital, a painting, an expensive portrait. And they think, well, perhaps because of all that, Things will go well with me when I pass away. But that's not what the Bible says. And Lord, I want to pray right now for America. That while she has time, while there's still opportunity, she will repent and turn back to God and have a tissue vow with a new heart, a transformed heart a Lev Hadash, and that she will ask God to forgive her and that she will turn to the goal redeemer, Moshiach ben David, and receive his kippurah and his forgiveness 
and his bringing us to the Father through the Ruach HaKodesh. Because there's no other way to Elohim Ha'av except through him, the Zun Funderoi Bishter. And Lord, I want to pray that many of these Brit Hadashahs will not be uh, discarded, but they will be read. Faith comes from hearing and hearing from the word of God. And Lord, I know that there is a judgment. And even if a murderer, let's say someone in the mafia who dies at a ripe old age, who has paid hitmen for many murders, he retires in Florida, he dies at a ripe old age, someone might say, well, he must have committed the perfect crime and there's no thing for him to worry about. The Bible says, some men's sins follow after them, but it is appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. And you can be sure of this, your sins will find you out. Every agog, every Perry and Smith, those were the two men that are remembered in the novel and the movie In Cold Blood by Truman Capote. These two men met their fate on the hangman's noose. And there is a great white throne and all peoples will have to gather there. If we judge ourselves, we will not be judged. And so Lord, I pray right now that we will judge ourselves and repent and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a savior. There is none alive but him, Yeshua HaMashiach alive from the dead, my savior and redeemer. Come into my heart, forgive my sins, take control of my life. 